and at least 700 Kenyans have returned to the country after quitting terror groups. A report by the Supreme Council of Kenya and the International Organization for Migration says the majority of the returnees defect from the extremist groups as it initially appeared. Ian Wafula reports. The leafy suburbs of Kenya's capital, Nairobi, it turns out that terror groups such as Al-Shabaab have found greener pastures here, turning some of these luxurious homes into cells where they recruit young children aged as young as 12 up to 17 years old. And it is for this reason this lady has opted to move out of her neighborhood. She recently informed KTN News that her 14-year-old son was allegedly recruited into the militant group. Her son's interactions with the alleged recruiter's father prompted him to change his name to Sardina Mwangi Bin Daudi. All this, she says, happened just a doorstep away. He had been promised $10 million. Once he blows 100 people and above, if he kills 100 people and above. Uh, it is surprising, but I see it as a natural progression in terms of it could be a tactic of people who want to perpetuate terror going into zones which were previously not. Since we are a com community of owners, I'm thinking that there should be a vetting system that before one sells their apartment, maybe uh, information should be brought forward to the managing committee just so that more information is gotten to know whom are we selling to, uh, who are the new people coming in. And uh, in this particular case, uh, is the person buying the apartment coming in to live or uh, are, they, are they planning to rent it out? She was not the only one who noticed that something fishy was going on within her neighborhood. To get more answers, we decided to visit the house in question. But for safety purposes, we were accompanied by officers from Kilelesha Police Station, which is just a walking distance from the house in question. <coughs> The presence of police officers on the cameras startled the occupants of the house, a group of young children. There was no adult present to talk to us. There wasn't much to go on, and so we were unable to verify the claims independently on whether it was a terror cell as reported. The case is still under investigation. The woman's story, however, is an indication that terrorism does not respect any boundaries, not age, race, nor religion. Uh, psychologists argue that young children cannot be changed, but you can confuse them. Uh, and young children cannot be um, convinced by what they'll get tomorrow, because young children uh, doesn't have tomorrow in how they, they are created. Young children can only get excited on what they get today. But if, you, if we talk about that amount of money uh, that is pegged on the number of people this person is going to kill, that by itself is very scary for a young child. A joint report by the Supreme Council of Kenya and the International Organization for Migration, which sampled an estimated 700 Kenyans, said to have returned to the country after quitting terror groups active combats. Majority of the returnees, the report said, were seriously injured in their dubious missions. Some of them were even amputated. Many were under the age of 23. Suppose I was promised um, that I'll be getting salary. A certain amount because most of them have been told they are getting uh, they'll be paid a thousand dollars and I don't get that I get fifty dollars instead on monthly basis what will happen if I get an opportunity of running away if I was told what I'm going to fight what I'm going to do in Somalia uh, or in, 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 in Syria is religious what will I do if I find that people whom we are going to kill are Muslims the report recommends for the government to not only protect the returnees but also use their testimonies to fight recruitment and radicalization. Ian Wafula, KTN News.